Hello and welcome to the Toyota Solutions Studio. Joining me now, we are pleased to have Dr. Menika Guruswamy. She's an advocate at the Supreme Court of India and also presently teaches at Yale Law School. Menika, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for having me. So, India is the world's largest democracy. We hear this every time Indian right. elections come around. It's the world's largest democracy going to the polls. Yet, women's rights really aren't where they should be sure. in India. Sure. Why, why is that? Well, I mean, this is the question, right? Where are women's rights where they should be? Uh, you know, are, are women's rights where they should be in the United States? Um, how is it that you have Donald Trump, a viable candidate, certainly a nominee for the Democrat, mm -hmm. uh, a nominee that the Democrats would love to have up against Hillary? Uh, but without getting into the political nuance of this, right, um, where are women's rights where they should be? You're right. I think deeply problematic in India. Um, I think we've got, um, you know, many battles mm -hmm. that need to be fought. Mm -hmm. um, uh, patriarchy and, and, and an intersection of gender and poverty and, 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 and tradition. Um, but, you know, you also have um, a radical trailblazing constitution. Um, and I think for younger generations, um, this constitution will mean much because I think they will all grow up in times where their parents would have had access to constitutional rights. And I think that means something um, in, in societies where so much in terms of hierarchy has been located you know, in tradition and in birth. So to have different generations then growing up in a country um, where the presumption is we are all equal. Mm -hmm. We are born equal. Uh, we have a, a right to equal opportunities and we will in many ways die alone and equal. Um, uh, you know, so I think, I, I think there is much change that will happen in India. Yeah. Um, I believe you talked about this in the panel as well. The 2012 Delhi gang rape case brought a lot of recognition to women's rights in right. India. Right. Um, but what do you feel needs to happen? Not necessarily another horrific incident sure, and crime sure, like that, but sure. what else needs to happen in terms of um, either people taking action or more women in, in various roles to make a significant, significant impact in moving women's rights forward? Do you, can you point to anything that would, do you think would make a big change? Well, I, I mean, I think it's it's many things, right? It's not a one thing, but it's it's many, many things. One, of course, you know, you need the courts to work better. Mm -hmm. um, you need policing to be more sensitive. Um, but really what needs to change is um, how do we raise our children? How do we raise um, our sons and our daughters? Yeah. You know, how do we raise our nieces and nephews and, and, and grandkids? Um, um, how are our homes organized? Yeah, right. So funny you say that. Did you see that ad that went viral? The Indian ad w about the laundry detergent where you saw yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and really we teach gender at home because uh, that's, that's where we learn it first. And then kids go to school and then, you know, they go to college and, and they experience the workplace. So gender starts at home. Um, and gender roles are ascribed at home. Um, so really that has to change and that has to change, um, you know, all over. Um, I think um, inequalities are, are relative. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think across cultures, um, that last great revolution will be um, gender equality. You've now worked um, at the Supreme Court in India for oh, almost 10 years, is that right? Nine yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so what have been your observations about women's role in government there? I mean, obviously, India, they've had a female prime minister, yeah. I mean, many, many yeah. years ago, <laughs> long well, before. We've, we've had a female prime minister. We've had, we have uh, many um, sitting chief ministers mm -hmm. are women, um, numerous uh, powerful politicians mm -hmm. um, are women. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a political fabric that is uh, used to, uh, accepts and is, you know, and, and uh, holds in great regard uh, many women uh, politicians. So, so it's, a, it's a democratic tradition which has been good um, with, with female politicians. I'm sure they've had extra challenges which most are not willing to share in the press. 
uh, or publicly. But nonetheless, I think in terms of democratic fabric, in terms of on the election trail, people are used to seeing women campaigning, not just you know as supplementary mechanisms, but as the main item on the ticket. You know, um, so I think that it's a very interesting uh, democratic tradition. Um, in many ways, um, it's been better on, on counts of gender uh, than the United States has been. I mean, Hillary's uh, Secretary Cl Clinton's sort of campaign has been very interesting for me to sort of watch while I'm here in the United States. Um, one, of course, there's the misogyny of Trump. Yeah. But there is this extraordinary way in which this supremely qualified candidate is treated, you know, mm. from the early days of what she was wearing. wearing. Yeah. Um, to you know, just this this extraordinary degree of skepticism that her candidacy is accorded. Um, I cannot think of a better qualified um, candidate objectively, mm. right? Um, so I think that all our countries have have far to go. Um, um, so you know, much needs to be done. Yeah. yeah, and this is why you said in the panel, take your country back. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me.